everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to part six of our Model Factory Hero Lancia HF Delta Integrale video build. So today we're going to focus on the bodywork. My goal in this video is to get this thing almost ready for primer because I want to test fit everything and get everything to fit as it should so that when we come to assembly later, we aren't hit with any hidden surprises or fitment issues. Today is the day we're going to fit everything and get it all working properly so it's three days work this took me quite a while to get to this stage a few hours every day probably eight hours a day getting everything here just a bootlet alone probably took two hours to fit and get it roughly into shape so lots of work don't be under the illusion these kits aren't work um first of all we're going to try out the new tumbler uh peter very kindly offered to pay for a tumbler and he did so thank you very much peter you're an absolute legend you can see it in action and see what a time saver it really is a uh, little bit of mucking around getting the right medium to clean it. I bought some burnishing fluid, which did not work well at all. It was terrible. As soon as I replaced it for cheap old uh, washing up liquid, Dawn dish soap, whatever you want to call it, very liquid, it worked absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to start with that very quickly. I'm going to show a quick use of the tumbler. Uh, and then we're going to jump in to getting the bodywork panels and everything to fit. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment i do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind i may not reply to them all but they are all appreciated and there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products i use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos will always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos so as mentioned in a previous video, I now have a mini magnetic tumbler. Uh, this is a Viva unit from Viva themselves. So we've got our white metal pieces that we haven't cleaned up at all. Uh, we've got the unit itself. We've got the bowl with all the pins in there, stainless steel pins, with some parts in ready to clean. We're going to use standard washing up liquid. This is Morrison's Berry, Dawn dish soap, fairy liquid, whatever you want to use, and some clean water as well. So we put our parts in up to the recommended filling point, fill our water up to just over the top. If it doesn't quite reach, move a few parts around so they go in. They will rotate round and turn and everything, so you can uh, manipulate them all to fit. Uh, a couple of glugs of uh, dish soap, like so. And there we go. And then we can switch the machine on. So. As you can see, what happens? Magnets spin, they grab those stainless steel pins and they spin them around through the parts and hit them. And the action of the pins hitting the parts cleans them up. And look how black that water's gone instantly off those parts. Now they are going to turn around. Some are going to come up the top of the surface, some are going to uh, disappear back in. So we'll pop the lid back on and leave that to it. So I've got another view of this as well, which is here. So a little bit shaky. So there you go, you can see the action of the pins spinning around. We've got time on it, we put it on half hour cycles on speed two, and it will rotate, uh, well, well, differentiate which way it spins from time to time as well. So as you can see, it really does agitate the surface. It does spin quite fast. There are some footage near the end of the parts being um, hit by the pins, but for a good unit, little unit, it works quite well. Look at the state of that water, absolutely filthy. So, like I said, we're going to leave on a half hour cycle. It will stop and rotate the other way as it's done here every now and then. And just leave it to do its thing. Here's the pins in action with some much smaller parts in. Basically, it's just roll cage parts in there. And you can see them spinning around. Apparently, hardly any force on there to damage any of the parts. And here we are. Half hour batches, lots of parts. So, it took me about five different goes to get everything done. Get the parts out of the pins is a bit of a pain. The magnet does come in handy. But you can see the shine we've got on those parts there. They are really nice and clean. Um, so thank you very much, Peter, who very kindly sent me the money to buy this. Uh, a very nice viewer who saw me, uh, didn't want me to be struggling, was appreciative of the videos of me building this, so offered to pay for the tumbler. Absolutely legendary generosity. And uh, thank you, mate. It's working absolutely brilliant. And the parts are absolutely spanking clean um, and saving a lot of hassle um as you can see the lot of them some of the smaller parts you really got to dig around in the pins to find so you need to be careful 
Here's some of them cleaned up afterwards. Now, obviously, they're still going to need cleaning up. They're still going to have seams. There still might be imperfections in there to file out. But it's a much better start than the filthy mess we were dealing with in part one. And as you can see by the state of the water after five cycles of this stuff, it is gross. So it just shows you how much work this does. Now, in the last part, we A, forgot to put this decal on. So we're going to do that today. And B, on one of the straps on that left-hand uh, tank, I got a bit of wash on it. So I had to replace the ribbon. So a bit of a faff doing that. So I have to take it back off and replace it with a clean piece of ribbon. And then just pop this decal in between. Standard decal and process, nothing uh, different than normal. The model factory hero decals are pretty decent. They go down really well. So just get it in place, line it up, remove any excess water, uh, hit it with decal solution of choice, which for me was strong today. Uh, and yeah, it just adds another part to the boot or trunk of this vehicle. So like I said, decals hopefully are going to be good because I'm kind of terrified till a later stage. Um, I'll put them on the vehicle itself. But we'll deal with that as and when we come to it. I so said, once you've got it in place, hit it with decal solution of choice for me. Ultima decal solution uh, strong. Just pop it in, a little bit on there, job done. Now, the main goal of today is we're going to spend this entire video, that's right, the whole next 33 minutes, getting all the bodywear panels to fit, the doors to open, the boot, and the bonnet to open as well. I want to test fit as much as possible on this to make sure we get no issues later. So we're going to test fit everything, including fitness to the chassis, right at the end, so that when we've got it all painted, and start assembling it, we don't get any nasty surprises. So we've got more holes to drill for the locating pins on the wings and what have you. Now, if you remember in the review, this front wing didn't fit at all. It was sitting proud at the back, a big gap, as you can see there. So drilling the hole here now has got rid of that gap. As you can see, closes it up, part locating really nice. So drilling out these locating points is a pretty simple thing to do and fixes that problem lickety split so no problems there at all as you can see it's in just nice so there we go these are going to have to be sprayed separately because there are screws behind them so i can't go into these in place right now because the front volants and bumper support are held on behind so lots of trial and error and fitment and what have you uh, it's a good three three days work on and off doing this getting everything to fit uh, a good, I don't know, six to nine hours a day at least, just to get these parts to fit, uh, quite fiddly. But time spent now will save heartache later. So test fit as much as we possibly can uh, for fitment, especially if it's an opening part as well. So we refer to instructions on the, uh, the screw sizes and drill the appropriate holes. Basically, most of them are going to be 1.5 and 1 mil. So the screws used are 1.4. Uh, so I'm going to drill a 1.5 mil hole if the screw just passes through and a 1 mil hole if it needs to screw in place. That way it goes to like 1.1-ish with the inaccuracy of my drilling and it gives us plenty of meat for the screw to grab on the way in. They're all um, what are they? 1.4 by 3 mil mostly for holding these body parts on bar the boot lid and the two, not the boot lid, the bumper and the two bonnet supports which are 8 mils I think. So. Yeah, just keep referring to instructions. Test fit, test fit, test fit. If it doesn't fit, make it fit. Uh, it's all workable. It's a pretty nice kit, this. I haven't got to the stage I've got to now. I can look back and think, you know what? Everything's fitted quite well. So the wings fit in place. We need to clean them all up. They've got wisps of excess resin everywhere. So go around with your sander of choice. It's a sponge ultimate sander for me. Uh, and then we can come back in and just keep test fitting until we're happy everything fits. Along the sides, you may need to use a knife to get rid of large excess material. Uh, if not, use a flat file or sander. Uh, but just take your time. It's easier to remove less than take out too much because you can't add it back in. We can always sand a little bit more. So little and often, keep checking the test fit and keep making sure um, you're not removing too much material and ruining all your hard work. So as you can see, I'm constantly sanding, popping it back on, making sure, having a look, definitely drilling. Nope everything's good live at the minute as well so chatting to people explaining things so excuse the hand gestures i'm not mental well i am but not in that case 
So yeah, it's a case of a lot of these parts are going to be going on and off quite a lot. Um, but that's to ensure we get the best possible fit. Like I say, just keep sanding until you're happy, little and often, and just keep test fitting. On it now, huge piece of white metal. Sadly, this would not fit in my tumbler. The tumbler ball was a little bit too small for it, so we're going to clean this one by hand. But just a quick test fit with those front arches on. And the fit wasn't bad. I'm just going to use a file on a bit just to take the very edges off. It's a little bit rough on the bonnet, and it does fit a lot better. So, yeah, with a Tamiya file, I'm just going to go around and lightly remove all the coarseness off the edge, or well, the edges, off the bonnet and that made it fit a lot better and then we come in with our sanders and smooth off the file marks sanders work surprisingly well on white metal and then we can come in with our drill and drill any holes and clean it all up so it's a substantial piece of white metal it has some weight to it and there's about another five or six components of white metal to go on so it does weigh quite a bit when it's done like i say we're going to scratch it up so we've got a 3000 grit uh, sponge sander here just to go around and get rid of any surface blemishes looking for flaws in the white metal anything that might need filing or sanding or filling but overall pretty clean we did need to tweak it a bit there's a lot of tweaking going on today not of anything dodgy of the white metal part so the boot lid is the worst of all it probably took me a good hour and a half two hours to get that boot lid to fit properly lots of tweaking and twisting the bonnet wasn't that bad. Just a couple of leading edges just need a little bit of a bend to get them into shape. Um, so it wasn't too much trouble this one. But if you spot a little flaw, like I have there, get your file. The file is much better at removing excess metal. Uh, the uh, sander will refine it a bit better afterwards. But like I say, now is the time to do this work. We don't want to get all this painted and then start seeing bits with mist or flaws in the metal. Because it's basically too late then. We want to do all the hard work now. So this, you know, three days of work should hopefully save a little bit of messing around later on. And when it comes to final assembly, we should have a much easier time. The front bumper on, we're just checking how that fits. And we're going to de-sprue. Uh, well, not sprue, is it? De What's the word? We're going to get rid of the uh, pore points. I'm trying to think of the thing. It's de-seam, but it's not really. It isn't a seam, is it? It's just the excess of the pore plug so we'll clean them up now these rear arches um didn't fit really well at the back there's a little bit of excess material on that far left left top piece of the rear arch and i can't get it to sand it so we're gonna have to kind of scrape it away gently with a very sharp chisel i'm just looking to see as and when it needs doing we just need a little bit off the top so we'll sand the part first get it all cleaned up so it's nice and smooth so again, just go around, remove any wisps of excess resin, any uh, flaws in it at all that need removing. Pretty clean resin though, to be fair. It almost is that good, it just looks like plastic. And then we've got some holes to drill. Uh, again, screw mounting points, so these need to be screwed in place before the rear bumper goes on. Um, so like I said, all these parts will be left off and painted separately, and a few holes to drill in the body itself as well. Like I say, most of the time using a 1.5 or a 1mm bit, depending on the size of the hole. Um, just follow your instructions, have a look. We use measurements to measure up the pins or the screws. They'll be going drilling big holes where you need to screw parts in, because then the screw won't bite into anything and you're in a little bit of trouble in. So with those holes drilled, we can test fit this. So there we go, they click in place there, but we're still fouled at the back. Just seeing how it fits in place. So turn it to the cape point. So as you can see, it sits out proud at the back. Because right where I'm going to get this chisel in here, just in that little crease at the back, it's just a little bit of excess resin. So it looks like I'm applying a lot of force. I'm not really. That sander is razor sharp. So I'm just getting it. Not sander. The file. It's not a file either. Chisel is the word I'm looking for. The chisel is razor sharp. So I'm just getting it in there. Just giving a little tweak and letting that scrape out all the extra material. We need to start on both sides. They're both equally as bad. Um, a good 20 minutes bit of work to get it in. And just keep removing it, removing it, and removing it until the part fits nice and flush. So it should, should sit not only flat to the surface, but right up at the top. And with those two arches in, we can test the doors as well to see how they fit. So one side of the doors lines up really well. This side. Nice panel line gaps, not too bad at all. The other side's got a bit of a bigger panel gap. 
But to be honest, there's not much we can do about that. It is what it is, so we'll just deal with it. And then our side skirts as well. Nice, easy resin to work with. Nice and clean. I would recommend using a dust mask because resin dust isn't good for you and gloves if you're unsure. Now, single-handedly, the worst part of this is this tailgate, and I knew it would be. Mine was quite heavily misshapen, so it's going to need lots of tweaking, some gentle bending. Um, like I say, this took a good hour and a half, two hours, just to get this to fit, and I still had to tweak it later on to get it to properly fit into place. So, lots of gentle bending. The white metal is very malleable. It does bend into shape quite easily. So just go a little often, just keep checking. If it doesn't fit, bend it back. And if it does, just give it a little bit more of a tweak like so, just till it sits evenly all around. As you can see, tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, getting all the angles down and the edges until it's gonna fit nicely. So I get most of it done now, and then we're gonna to need to put the interior trim on, the hinges on, and then double check how it all fits but it's it's an easy to manipulate part you can see it's bending really easily but you'll find when you bend one way you've got to do the other as well so it's kind of like rob and peter to pay paul uh once you're happy you've got the majority fitted i'm going to run the file around to get rid of any flaws around the edge standard pretty standard simple work on all the white metal is clean up deeper sand um and then we get our 3000 grit sanding sponge over the top That'll give us a nice uniform finish and also check for any flaws. Anything that shouldn't be there. If there is any flaws, you can get a sander or a file in there to get rid of them completely. So, yeah, it's uh, not too bad. It was a bit of time consuming this piece. It was a little bit of a pain. I always knew it would be from the day I reviewed it and saw just how bent it was. I knew this was going to be a problematic part. But overall, it's fitted in not bad. Like I said, it still needs tweaking a little bit. We'll get to that later when we put the interior parts on and get it all screwed in place in the hinges. Um, but just with a little bit of bending, gentle work, a bit of patience. Like I say, good hour and a half, two hours to do this piece. It is a pain, and it's still not done. Like I say, if you go around your spot a floor, get the file, very gently file it away. Uh, don't go mad with the sander because the file is much better at removing excess metal. And then once you've done that, you can come back in with your sander and clean it up. As you can see, Lots of nice shiny parts in these boxes now from the tumbler. It works fantastic. We've got our door window frames here now, four of them to pop in place. Now, I made a silly mistake here. I've got these on the wrong side. That is for the other side. I've got it inside out, and I bend them into shape, get them fitting perfect, and then noticed, don't, I've got the wrong way around. With the way they're facing now, there's a recess for the window pane, which goes on the inside, and it's currently on the outside. So what I do here, I do off camera, and bend it the other way to fit. So there's locating points on the back of that inner wing, and all I'm doing there is just tweaking the door frame until it bends just to shape. You can see how far out it is. It's massively off. So I'm just popping it there, and what I am doing is put it under the edge of my black mat with the green mat over the top, putting pressure over the top, and using it like a cheap bending machine for white metal. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of force to bend it, so just to keep it straight, and I'm just going to keep going, until I get it flush and then we can pop the rear arch on. There's two locate or well, three locating points in the back. Make sure they're in place, make sure it sits inside. The rear door isn't opening obviously. And then exactly the same process for the front. We've got it taped in place on the door. I'm just gonna get it very roughly in place for now. We probably need to tweak when it's all painted, but the more work we do now the better. And with the other side done and all the panels taped on just to check our fit. There we go. That's that all done. Now the bonnet, like I say, there's about six, seven, maybe even eight components here. We've got two front grills, the little ones, two at the back, so there's four, and there's three frames, so there's seven with the bonnet, eight, nine with the bonnet hinges. So these piece pieces needed a bit of straightening up, especially these grills. As you can see, they're shaping, uh, misshaping a little bit, so I'm getting my chisel in just to kind of bend them up and reshape them. We've got two holes to drill. For God's sake, don't go right through the white metal, through the bonnet. So you really need to be careful here. Just drilling nice and gentle to one mil hole again. And then some of the components need holes in as well for locating points as well. So a little bit fiddly this, but it looks good when it's done. It is worth it. And as long as the bonnet fits perfectly, I am more than happy. The grills were quite misshapen, so they did need a bit of straightening out on that. Front one had a lot of pitting in the white metal as well, so I had to sand away and file away quite a bit of that as well. 
Got all the hardware now for holding the doors, uh, boot and bonnet on there as well, as well as a front grille, the rear number plate holder, and the rear inner arches for the rear bumper, which we're not going to put on today. So all these need cleaning up, pretty standard clean up as last time. Um, these will have to be acid etch primed as well, separate from the body. So if any parts are attached to the body to be sprayed as well, they're going to get grey acid etch prime first, then glued into place, then prime white with the rest of the car, and then painted white. Um, I am going to paint all the white metal in acid etch, just to make sure we get the best possible finish. You saw the rear spoiler there as well, which was quite heavily misshapen. So that was also straightened up as well. And we've got some hot water and some fairy liquid just to clean up these parts. So again, quite surprising just how much muck comes off and how much better they look just from a simple wash over of fairy liquid. But I'll tell you now, if you've got these kits or you're contemplating getting one, the magnetic tumbler is a massive time saver. I just wish the bowler man was a little bit bigger, but it's literally only two parts that the whole kit didn't fit in, uh, which was the bonnet and the boot lid. So a bit of a toothpaste clean with some washing up liquid will do the job just fine. Dry it off. You can see, look, nice sheen to the metal. So it works really well. And obviously, we have a key to service on the other side. It's nice and shiny. Right, some more resin parts. We've got a front volance. We've got the inner engine bay, the turrets, suspension turret, sorry, front bumper mounts and the rear inner boot lid surround as well there to do. So standard cleanup on resin, use your sandings of choice. If you've got any pour plugs, you can just come with a razor saw and whip those off and then sand them smooth. So pretty standard procedure. We've done it all the way along. Uh, just be careful of the resin. It does look so much like plastic. It's easy to forget how brittle this can be. So don't be dropping it on the floor. This is a good chance you'll break something. But cleanup's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Make sure you've got a dust mask on and gloves if you're allergic to it. And uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. So with all the parts here ready for the bumper, uh, sorry, the uh, bonnet now, we can start assembling it. We've got my thicker gel glue. We're going to have a super glue nozzle tip as well. You can find all these in my Amazon affiliate store, link down below. This glue is fantastic. These super glue nozzles are amazing as well. Highly recommend getting these. You literally cut them to size with scissors or cutters or whatever. And then cut the nozzles to size as well. Slip it over the top, and you've got a precision super glue applicator. Nice and easy. Works really well. And then just put it in place where you need the glue. You get precise amounts exactly where you need it. If I go mad, and get the parts in place. So, like I say, several components are popping in place here. I'm not going to dwell on them too long because they're all pretty straightforward. Just refer to instructions and assemble them as required. Now, Again, just because you've shaped this place piece to fit now, putting parts out of this may move it, so make sure you test fit afterwards as well. We're going to test fit these parts a dozen times at least along the way. If anything that's changed or added, just to make sure that they fit. Um, but overall, this assembly of this, not too bad at all. Uh, get the glue grills in place. Like I say, four grills in total, two bigger ones, two little ones. And then three strengthening pieces as well to pop in place. They're all locating points. They're not the most positive on the underside, but they are there. And if you get the excess super glue showing through, get a bit of acetone or a cotton bud. You're not going to damage the white metal and get rid of the excess while you can. The quicker you do it, the easier it is to come off. The beauty of white metal is not really affected by anything like that at all. But if it's plastic, you stand a good chance of melting the plastic of acetone. And again, line everything up, get them glued in place. And there we go, job done. And then the middle section in place like so. And then the rear piece in as well. Pretty straightforward, just needs a bit of test fitting, a little bit of fettling, a little bit of sanding. Keep referring to those instructions. Test fit, test fit, test fit is by far the motto to have with these kits. Test everything several times. Trust me, it will save you heartache and so much drama later on. I'm hoping that doing all this today will mean when I come to assemble the body later, I shouldn't have any real issues. Now the body hinges themselves, we're going to do a 1.5mm hole where the screw passes through, i.e. doesn't need drilling. 
and then a one mil hole for anything that needs contact off the drill bit. So with this, we've got the uh, top part is going to be just screwed through into the bonnet. So it's a one mil hole in the bonnet with a 1.5 mil hole in the hinge. And then our 1.4 by 3 mil uh, screw is screwed in place. And then there's a one mil pin to go through the side. Same with these um, bumper supports on the side. If the drill bits are going through like this, um, we'll do a one mil. And if it's just passing through as a separate part like this outer piece, it's a 1.5 mil. These are supports to hold the bumpers in place. A little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly, so be very careful here. Don't put them on too tight to begin with because you will have to move them around. There's them both in place. The front for Lance, uh, or as I had our holes drilled in, and then the side of the body as well. So it's a case just lining that up at the front. And then screwing it in place as and where required. Nice and simple. The Tamiya Pro Screwdriver, great addition if you use, use a lot of these screws. So if you're an avid bike builder or 12 scale Tamiya builder or even these, the great screwdrivers have really nice fitments. It's it's not too big, so you can't get too much torque on it to ruin things. So I like it for that. Front bumper, slots in place on two pins at the front and then slides over that mount. And obviously the holes were drilled in the top as well, match the holes on the bracket. Grab a 1.4 by 1 mil uh, screw, pop it in place, hold both of them together, and gently screw in place. Don't go too mad, you don't want to over thread it. And there we go, there's our bumper in place, securely mounted, very, very secure. And with our wings on and arches, the fit is absolutely fantastic. Very, very precise. Yeah, really nice. Um, this is the rear screw that holds the chassis in place, the rear bumper in place. Uh, so we're going to screw that in now and we're going to test fit the bumper as well. So that's an 8mm by 1.4mm screw. So that will go through the chassis eventually as well. And then the doors, we've got some 1mm holes to drill very shallowly. Don't go through the door, very easy to do because we've got some brackets to screw in place here for the door hinge mechanism. As I say, if the screw passes through, it gets a 1.5 mil bit because it's a 1.4 screw going through it. If it gets screwed into, it gets a 1 mil hole. That's the way I've been doing it. So switching and changing drill bits, a bit of a pain. The white metal is nice and easy to drill though, with a couple of holes drilled in place. That is ready to go. So we can line all that up with the hinge and the mountain bracket and then screw it in place like so. And I have to repeat that for both doors, obviously. The windows we're going to leave as are for now. They'll be coming off and getting sprayed separately. But like I say today, the goal is to get everything lined up to make sure everything fits. Two one mil holes in the side of the uh, door pillars. And these are the holes where are screwed uh, the brackets into. And there we go. Very carefully screwed in place. Don't go mad and don't be afraid to move things around a bit. It doesn't quite fit. But to be fair, the fit was really good. Like I said, this Tammy screwdriver, it's magnetic, so it holds the screws in place for you. It can be a hindrance sometimes, and it pulls the screw out at the worst, most inopportune time. But as a tool, typical Tammy works really well. And like I say, because it's not a large screwdriver, you can't get a lot of purchase on it to give it a lot of torque. So you'll find it does a lot less damage. And thankfully, the doors fit spot on. Obviously, the windows need settling later. And that would just pop in underneath like so. The doors fit really well. Even the door cards in place later. And there we go. The arches on. Fit is really good. It's definitely better on one side than the other. There's a bit of a bigger gap on the other side. I can't remember which side it is if it's this one or the other one. But they fit in really well. So very happy about that. Absolutely spot on. Like I say, repeat it for the other side. Not going to show it full process. I'll show it very, very quickly. Screw all the holes, screw them in place, and test fit. Yeah, nice to work on. I'm really enjoying this kit. It's a, it's a challenge. It's a bit head scratching at times, which is what I think I like about it. But overall, it's been a fun kit to work on. So the rear number plate surround goes inside the tailgate. I've already test fitted it. 
sanded where needed, filed away the excess, and it goes in a specific way, so make sure you get it. Line it all up, put a bit of glue in there, and jobs are good. And there we go. Push those in place like so. And then while we're at it, we're going to take the bumper back off. And we're going to fit the inner engine bay piece in as well. Wasn't originally going to do this. And I thought, you know what? Sod's law. I'll forget to do this and it won't fit. So that literally slots in at the back. Slots in at the front. There's two more holes where we mounted the uh, volants in. So they're drilled out as well. The same um, 1.4 by 3 mil screws hold it all in place. And uh, I'm very surprised at how well this thing goes together. It's been playing ball pretty well. Um, I definitely picked the right kit so far to build. It's been quite lenient. I know there's some horror stories with some of the kits. But if you do your research and do it well, um, I think you'll end up with a nice build. For me, the next one I'm going to go for is the Lancer 037. 100%. I want to build that car. Along with this, it's my probably second favourite rally car. Um, it'd be in the Lancia markings again, most probably. So Lancia, the Martini markings again. So that is my next planned one. And Jamie, who is currently buddy building this with me, and is at pretty much the same stage, is going to do the Lancia Beta. So it's going to be nice that we're doing a buddy build at the minute, then our next ones will be different cars. So there we go. That's the inner uh, engine bay in place. Rear spoiler now. It's a very, very flimsy piece of white metal, this. So take your time on this one. Uh, there's a couple of little support to go on the edge. So they've been drilled out, all been straightened as much as possible, test fitted, and then just a little dab of CA glue. We're going to glue those in place. One mil drill bit again into the rear boot lid. So these are the uh, boot lid release pins, catches, whatever you want to call them. So they'll be put on after paint. So I thought I'd drill them now. And then we've got the two holes at the top where the spoiler mounts as well. I'm just going to test fit it to now. So it's just going to be pushed in place for now. Fits really well. Probably needs a little bit of tweaking to straighten it up. And then inside, like I said, we've got a boot lid as straight as we possibly can. But I need to get these mounting brackets in. So we've had to drill into the body. Same way we did all the bonnets and doors and what have you. Very carefully put a shallow hole in. Put the white metal brackets in, 1.4 mil screw by 3 mil in place and gently screwed in place. These are all going to have to come back off later. So we don't want to go mad screwing everything in place really tight, just with enough force to hold everything. And there we go, there's our boot lid working and it shuts pretty well. It needs a bit more tweaking, it really does. And then our front balance and slam panel gets drilled through from the top right through to the bottom and then this is where our bonnet hinge pins mount with a eight mil drill bit all the way through and ties it all together so again drilling holes in the white metal as well for the screws line them up make sure you get the correct way round screw them in place so it's a one mil hole all the way through and then i've opened the very top piece up with a 1.5 uh, it's a 1.5 mil through the bracket as well. And there we go. There's the hinge pins in place, or the hin bonnet hinges. I haven't fully tightened them up. I've left them loose. We're cutting off some of the 1 mil brass rod now. And I'm just going to slot that through because this is what holds it in. We'll put some glue in at the end when we're going to finally hold them in place. But for now, this is just a test fit. So no need to permanently affix anything. And there we go. We lift it up. That works perfect so yes that's brilliant and then with the side arches on again the fit is great so while i had the doors on i thought i'd get the door cards and we'll definitely make sure everything fits so tidy up all the door cards lots of dodgy seams around the edges of these they're pretty um yeah they need a bit of work be very careful because it is quite a flimsy part as well so don't go too mad with the sander and then with a little bit of press fit into the mounting plates where they go and again shut the door they're in place push everything down hold it open and shut the door a few times and it's perfect fits no bother at all doesn't foul anywhere and obviously the same is repeated for the other side and there we go nice and simple and there's the doors fitting with their interior panels which is fantastic 
And then the boot lid, we've got this rear panel here. Now, I had test fitted this the day before. I knew I'd have to remove a lot of material from the bottom of the resin. So I thought, I'll just get it in place roughly, and we'll see what we got. But I really had to go to town on it, because it was fouling the boot lid from shut properly. It was just too tall. Just need a little bit of material off. So with the old chainsaw 182, what is this one? 100, 180 white sponge, which is a very vicious sander. I'm going to really go to town and remove a lot of material off this because I simply have to. Uh, it took a good bit of sanding, a good bit of test fitting to make sure it didn't go too far. Um, but yeah, we did have to remove a surprising amount of material to get this to fit. So don't be worried about sanding. There are all the cape points in here for magnets as well, so be aware of that. Um, we'll get those in before we go to paint as well. And uh, quick test fit, you know, you might need to take it on and off a couple of times to make sure it does fit properly. But as you can see there, where it sits at the bottom of my thumb is, that was fouling. It was hitting the rear bumper, basically stopping the boot lid from shutting down properly. So with plenty of it gone, we drilled the holes in. We'll pop a screw in to hold it in place. And there we go, pretty much spot on. Happy with the fitment of that. It may need a bit of tweaking later on, but for now, it's pretty much how uh, as good as it's going to get. Front grill, and again, we're going to test fit this, straighten it all out. It needed quite a bit of straight in this piece, but we're going to acid etch prime this before it goes in place. So we'll acid etch prime it, glue it in place, and then prime with the rest of the bumper. But I'm just test fitting it to make sure it's all straight. And it did need a lot of adjustment to get it to fit properly, um, making sure you get the right way around, because it's very easy to put the wrong way around, and it won't fit at all. And then here we go. Test fit, yeah. So doors open really well. Close very nice. Obviously, those windows will be sorted later. Um, all these arches are just press fit on for now. They hold themselves on quite well. Bonnet opens really nicely as well. You just need to keep straightening bits as you see them. At least the white metal is very easy to work with. It's not a tough material to bend. You can get it in place. So lots of tweaking. Like I say, test fit, test fit, test fit. And there we go. There is our bonnet in place. And some stills. I thought I'd get it all together. And we'll show some of the parts. So it's a good looking car. It's a fur all size. It's obviously not the biggest of cars. But in 12 scale, anything is pretty big. And it's gone together really well. It's a good looking car. Not had a lot of fitment issues so far, which I'm very, very thankful of. And uh, as you see, with the bonnet open, the doors open, the boot lid, it's going to be an impressive looking thing when it's done. And uh, it certainly would take, be a focal point in my display case. Um, but yeah, a lot of work to get to this. About three solid days' work. The bonnet is lovely, all those strengthening plates underneath. Very nice. Once this is all painted up, it's going to look really smart. Uh, the boot lid, I finally got it fitting right after hours of work. <laughs> so nice to get that there and as I say opened up we're going to see right into all those tanks in the back so they're going to look pretty cool doors are good everything fits well with everything up like I say quite an impressive vehicle the rear doors don't open I have seen people open them uh, for me no, not interested in that and with the chassis on and screwed in place everything still fits fine the boot lid still shuts the door still shut with the door cards on and there we go. This little stand at the bottom here is an RC uh, working stand. I bought that off Amazon. It's in my Amazon store. Link down below should you want one. And with the tanks in the back and the boot lid open, as you're about to see in a second, it all looks really good. So once this is together, this is going to look fantastic. And so far, it's actually been great fun to work on. There we go. That's where we are today. Very happy with our progress. It was a part of the build I've not been looking forward to at all because i knew it was going to be a lot of work but to be fair it actually went better than i thought it would it actually all went well pretty well the boot lid was a pain in the backside it really was a nightmare so much work and tweaking to get it to fit but it's there so i'm happy with that and like i say time spent now will save heartache later so hopefully when we come for final assembly we shouldn't have any major fit issues and everything will close up properly for us so yes there we are that's where we're at today so next step will be priming all the white metal parts in acid etch 
attach any of the uh, metal parts to the plast resin part of a plastic for priming in white. Uh, if they don't, they need priming separately in white. And then we start getting some of our paint down, which we've got our colour match paints there from paint nuts that myself and Jamie got in the proper Lancia colour. So that's good. And we get some paint down on this and then hopefully move on to decals as well. So quite exciting, moving forward quite quick on this. Um, it's been a lovely build so far, I've enjoyed it. It's quite daunting in places. Uh, it's a real test and head scratch to figure out how to get things to fit sometimes. How to problem solve, I always enjoy anyway. Um, but it definitely is not for a beginner modeler at all. And I think you'd struggle. But certainly if you've built a few kits or you go through under your belt, uh, I think you do all right as this. Not as daunting as you think. And I've got a good kit here. This one's a good one. Uh, I don't think it was any issues at all. So there we go. So first of all, huge thanks to Peter. Absolute legend, mate. Thank you very much. Saving a lot of time there. And the parts look fantastic cleaned up. They look so much nicer. Much cleaner on the hands and a lot less hassle. So thank you very much, buddy. And thank you to everyone that's watching the videos and leaving feedback on them as well. Now, if you watch this on ISM, you can watch these two weeks early on Patreon uh, release, should you wish. My Patreon link is down below. Pick tier two or higher, and that will give you two week instant access to all the videos. There's about six of them there that aren't on here now, because they're all backlogged for two weeks. Um, so you get early access on those. Two weeks I offer, two weeks early access. Then they eventually go on ISM. You also get a weekly exclusive live stream on a Wednesday morning. Uh, and you get to choose future reviews and builds and the knowledge in keeping these videos going because uh, this is my job essentially this is what i do for my living uh, there's also a paypal me to buy me coffee link if you like, want to do a one-off as well uh, and obviously all the other uh, the other social media links are down below for ism facebook page forum upretail.com my poor ism modeling page my affiliate link with all my modeling goodies on amazon they're all there a lot of the stuff i use in my videos Product list of all the products I use, uh, an email to get in touch with me, and my scale mate should you want to add me as a mate on there. So there you go. Thanks for watching. As always, make sure you sub to the channel, click that bell notification, give a thumbs up, and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. They spare me all the builds, so please take the time to leave a comment. And the question for today, hmm, uh, let's have a think. Hmm. It gets harder and harder to think of questions. So what can mine be? Yes. Okay, if I was to wear a hat, it's a random question today. What hat would suit me best? There you go. Let me know that one. Try that one for size, not the hat. What hat would suit me best? Keep it clean as well. Don't be uh, don't be rude in the chat. Yeah. Crap question, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. There you go. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.